Good morning, everyone. Welcome in. Betsburts Golf here for a first look at the 2024 RBC Heritage. We'll take a look at Corrales Putsakana Open as well. Uh, Ryan Noonan here joined by no one. Flying solo this morning without Ron Kloss. Uh, solid Masters hangover for Ron, uh, who will be back in the content uh, streets here for us at Betsburts Golf shortly. You'll see him on the DFS show here on Wednesday. Uh, but I'm going to take you around uh, with the Masters recap first to get started, and then we'll try to jump in, uh, do a deep dive here at Harbor Town. Touch briefly on Putacana as well, since we have a alternate event this week. Super Stokes coming off of the Masters. Hopefully, it was a profitable one for you out there as well. Talked about how it's just absolutely terrifying to go into that event and not have some form of Scotty Scheffler ticket. It's very prohibitive to do that at the price at four to one. You know, he even tickled up to like four to one live for a moment there on Saturday. If you were able to jump back in and, or, you know, get a share at that point, because by the time Thursday afternoon rolled around, he was already like plus 125, plus 120 in some spots after, you know, just a couple of uh, holes and not everyone even finishing yet or even getting on the course, because obviously Thursday was was delayed, but just an absolutely insane display of winning a major championship by margin when you don't have your A game. Just shouldn't really happen. And uh, it was a absolute clinic. Now there, you can make a case that he had his A game for the stretch that he needed to. Uh, kind of at the turn there on Sunday afternoon. Uh, again, just insane golf, uh, you know, birdieing, uh, Eight, the shot on nine, uh, knowing that, you know, Luda had just made that that birdie ahead of him, which really put him close, and he started to get momentum as well. For Scotty to go out and just really tickle the cup on nine, do it again on 10, the hole that, you know, he had trouble with the day before, you know, gave one back on 11, which was was hard to do, but then stayed aggressive. Uh, birdies on 13, 14, uh, you know, nice, aggressive, but smart par on 15 and then took a shot on 16 again and put himself in position to, to kind of just put his foot on the throat of everyone else that just kind of fell back a little bit, which again, like the course is playing super duper hard all week. And uh, even though he gave some back here and there, it was inevitable, uh, you know, for Oberg to, to fall off a little bit again, just, Want to be long on that kid? I bet in 28 in the middle of Saturday afternoon for the PGA at Valhalla, those numbers are already gone, and that was kind of the the impetus of the bet was that those almost 30s were going to be around if he continued to play like this in front of a national stage that maybe hadn't seen him uh, as much. So, you know, he faltered a little bit finding the water there. Um, you know, Max bad break on 12, just continued to grind pars, but it just wasn't capitalizing enough on some really good shots. He drove the ball really well. Couldn't take advantage. It was interesting to see him not be super aggressive there down the stretch. Uh, I think he got a little bit nervous and then, you know, took it a little bit more conservative, but nice finish for him. T3. I think the, and I wrote about it multiple times. We've talked about it here. I'm a, I'm a max guy for sure. He's hard. It's hard not to be, but the max and the major stuff was such BS. The dude has won. All of his his PGA Tour, I mean, he's got a couple of four deaths, right? So otherwise, Quail Hollow, Riv, Tory. Um, we played the Potomac one year instead of Quail Hollow uh, because of the President's Cup. That Potomac was hard. He won there against a decent field. So like Max not winning in majors or doing well in majors is such a garbage narrative. And uh, hopefully uh, we see more of that to continue here. Morikawa, just uh, it, great to see him back and in the mix because he obviously did not come in with really any form. His separator really hadn't been much above field average. I mean, that was he's he's still gaining on approach week in and week out. But when you know that he's not leading in that stat or top three consistently in that stat, like it's harder for him. The rest of the game is just not up to snuff with some of the other guys that have the distance that he uh, does not have. So and that kind of showed up a few times and. Uh, made it hard, but again, good to see him super competitive. Bryson took advantage of a super soft course on Thursday and then really didn't do much else otherwise. Just kind of didn't take didn't take advantage. And that was kind of you know the the bugaboo for Bryson coming into this course. 
It's just not a place that served him really well historically, but was able to make hay on Thursday. It was cool to see him. I mean, I miss Bryson. I, I think he's I think he's a blowhard for the most part, but I love the fact that he, you know, likes to continue to tweak and find ways to do things outside the box. And uh, even the irons this week with the 3D printing of irons and all that. He's just trying to find an edge that suits him any way possible. And I respect that. I think having him around makes for some entertaining discourse. I think it makes for, he's an entertaining watch. So miss having Bryson around week in and week out. Um, though I was not surprised to see him uh, kind of fall back a little bit. Uh, Xander with the top 10, absolutely not surprising whatsoever. Xander even kind of getting like maybe in the secondary mix after not being uh, involved at all early in the week is like, that is Xander to a T. Uh, I thought maybe we'd even have like a, maybe a top three finish, you know, no smoke Xander, three or four groups off the, the final group. That's kind of the, the Xander MO there. Uh, good to see Zal Torres play really well. Uh, Patton finished uh, inside the top 10, punching a ticket back here next year, though he hates it. Uh, just a miserable well, – every time Hatton comes on the screen, it's so miserable to watch. Uh, just like the anti-Ludwig who just could not be more like, – ignorance is bliss, smiling, you know, puts it in the water, doubles, smiling, like just enjoying himself out there, all the talent in the world, and like Hatton seems absolutely miserable in his skin – uh, but gets to come back next year because he uh, he finished inside the top 12 again. So did Patrick Reed, though he's obviously uh, coming back here anyway. Matthew Pavon is coming back here next year. It continues to uh, just mystify me with how uh, where this is coming from and how he's getting it done. There's nothing in his GP World Tour uh, bio that would tell you that this is this guy. And he continues to show up and play pretty well. Adam Shank, Cam Davis also uh, punched their tickets back. But yeah, Scotty to win by margin. Uh, when he didn't really have his A game, is kind of wild. So uh, terrifying. And he is in the field this week for the RBC Heritage. And uh, as of now, as of this recording, as we're coming live, he is currently in the field. And does he withdraw? I don't. I don't know. Right now, he's there's an advantage maybe to to have the ability to bet into a board that has Scotty in it because numbers, especially at the top, will shrink here. Uh, pretty pretty quickly in terms of some favorites, some guys that have some decent course history or uh, coming back here and have showed well in the past. Like they'll get significantly shorter if Scotty bows out here on a Monday afternoon. So uh, definitely something to watch here. And let's take a look here at the early odds board. I'll share this here. Uh, the friends over at the lines. Uh, shop around. These are some books here that are available to me in Illinois. Uh, you might have some other stuff available. Maybe you have offshores. Obviously, Monday is important to shop around. We're seeing more uh, drift late in the week than we've seen in the past. So guys that aren't taking on a ton of action early on a Monday morning are moving in a positive way. If you are waiting, typically in the last handful of years, it's been pretty opportunistic to get in on Monday morning and take advantage of some good numbers that disappear pretty quickly. I still find that to be the case in the middle of the board or down the board a little bit. But, uh, you know, definitely something to watch here there. If you had a guy that you could see here on the screen in the top, Scotty, Rory, Xander, uh, Ludwig, Cantley, Fitz, uh, these guys are are going to get shorter if Scotty bows out here. Obviously, coming off of the Masters win, obviously his wife is pregnant. It's much reported this weekend. Uh, thank you to Meredith for holding out and, uh, you know, baby chef waiting a little bit longer. But uh, as you can see, this is a loaded field. We have another signature event on the back of a major. Really curious. I get it. Like, it's easy because the guys are uh, proximity to, uh, you know, to Hilton Head from uh, Augusta is, is short. It's very easy for these guys to travel and get over there. Uh, this is a course, uh, Harbor Town, that deserves to be showcased with a great field. I wish there was a different way to do it because I think – I don't love this, and we I, we're seeing we saw it last year. We'll see it again later this year, where on the back of majors or leading into majors, we have a uh, designated signature, elevated event, whatever you want to call it. And I don't know, it's like a little bit of breathing room. I, I like I like to have a little bit of a if we just had a Corrales this week instead, and where some of these guys can maybe choose to to play if they wanted to or something like that. But here we are. It is what it is. We have a, a loaded field. 
uh, small field, 68 guys, uh, basically no Vic uh, and no Hideki. They both have opted out in terms of guys that are eligible to tee it up here at Harbortown this week that are not in the field. So uh, shop around. Obviously, you can see here, again, I, I have access right now to FanDuel, DraftKings, and Bet Rivers, and they have some early lines up. Uh, and some guys that I really wanted to take a look at that are a little bit shorter than I was hoping, uh, but I did take a couple of stabs here early on a Monday morning, and maybe we'll see them pop in the model uh, that we'll build here now on uh, Betsports Golf in the Rabbit Hole. So uh, I want to show you this too. We've talked about this a lot. Uh, prices today, I believe, if you're watching live now, take advantage. Prices are going up today, Monday, the day after the Masters at noon eastern if you are currently a subscriber and if you are a subscriber before that window so if you have been hanging out with us since we launched or you got in this year or you get in today between now and 12 eastern on monday april 15th you are in for life at that price you will be able to be grandfathered into your old pricing whatever you lock in whether that's weekly monthly or an annual subscription, and it's annual, it's rolling for the year. So if you subscribe now, you will take you through this time next year, and you'll be locked into that price, uh, which is a by far the best in the market. We are not getting above market, and anything else that you would say would be any, our competitors, I would argue that we just legit, this is like really arrogant, I would argue legit we don't have competitors. You know, We have the best tool for data. Uh, we also back that up with elite content. And uh, that, just that's just it. So uh, subscription gets you access to all that we do, all the written content, Discord, uh, great Discord community, uh, grinding uh, all sorts of bets. You can get bets from our staff in the Discord as well. You get bets from other subscribers. And again, a, a really smart community that I think is worth your time to get in there and poke around with, uh, chatting golf all the time. Uh, DFS, you get into, you get our optimizer. Uh, we have other tools on the site, matchups tools, player pages tournament pages uh, coming very, 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 very soon. I'm uh, really excited to show those to you guys. And uh, those are going to be coming. And I think will be, uh, you made the case that you really don't have to do any research anywhere else off our site. You'll be able to have everything that you need uh, to get answered, to be able to um, build a betting card, build a player pool for DFS uh, on Betsports Golf through the rabbit hole and all the other tools. So take advantage of that. Betsportsgolf.com. Check it out. Lock it in today. Uh, if you want, we have a partnership with Vivid Picks, which is a DFS Pick'em site that's out there. Uh, we have some information on that on our uh, site as well. Partner with them. Deposit and play $5 with Vivid Picks using our promo code Best Golf or losing any of the links in the site, and you can get the rest of the year for just 5 bucks. So that deal is also going away later in the month. Um, Again, you won't be able to lock in the early bird pricing using that deal. But, you know, if you want to test this out, that's a great way to do so. Uh, and you can DM us if Vivid Picks is not in your state. Uh, we get you a promo code to take advantage of a, a discounted month or a, uh, a sizable discount off of the yearly price before it goes up if you get in today. So uh, check that out. All right, let's, uh, let's let's mess around here. And uh, typically we'll talk with Ron. We'll talk about the key things that matter here for Harbortown. Uh, but let's build out a model here a little bit. I'll touch on the course again uh, real briefly before we get started. This is one of my absolute favorite tracks. Uh, regretfully, my annual guys golf trip went to Hilton Head uh, three years ago. I could not convince everybody to play. Because uh, it's a little pricey, but at the same time, like there aren't a lot of PGA Tour tracks that we come to annually that are available to the public to play, uh, and like as iconic and really unique as Pete Dye's Harbor Town is. Um, so yeah, it, it's a great watch, and I love that we're getting a, a signature event field here. Uh, the interesting thing here is basically all the guys that have won here in the past, <laughs> outside of the last couple of years, right? Like, Fitz is the defending champ. Jordan won here, Spieth, uh, in 2022. We've had – he beat Cantley in the playoff. Cantley just missed the playoff last year with Fitz, who beat Spieth. So you kind of have that trio has played really well. Fitz, as you, if you remember, 
or follow golf at all. Like this is where he's like vacationed with his family for years. He has a uh, lighthouse head cover on his bag because of Harbor town. This is a, a great uh, place that Fitz loves to come. So those three guys kind of at the top are, are very familiar. The rest of the guys that have won here in the past, Stu Sink, Webb Simpson, uh, CT Pan, uh, Kadira, Wesley Bryant, Brandon Grace, Furek, Kucher, like those guys that were here because it's a signature event. Uh, so those guys are, you know, either playing in Corrales or not playing at all. So it's, or in the champion store at this point. So it's kind of an interesting place where some of the guys have fared well here in the past or are not here, but this is a, a very unique kind of hybrid where you are a little bit, you know, it is on Hilton head Island, but you are mixed into the trees in a little bit of a unique way where it feels like some Carolina golf. Uh, so very tight fairways, dog legs, uh, angles, where you have a lot of like positional golf, a lot of target golf. Um, it is really hard to, well, you can't bomb and gouge this place. You can't uh, get there with, with power. You have to have finesse. You have to have shot making. Uh, you have to be able to have precision to be dialed in. So that is part of what you see some of the guys here that I mentioned in the past that, that kind of show up and play well here. Those are not guys that typically overpower golf courses. They are very strategic in, in what they do. And that's kind of what showed up here uh, over the years. Uh, it is a relatively short golf course, just around 7,100, a little bit more from the tips. Par 71. Uh, the rough is not super penal, but you have to be in the right spot. Otherwise, you have no shot uh, of leaning yourself into a a birdie opportunity or even a grind par. You could be in the fairway and have these like palmettos hanging over your approach shot. And it's like, yeah, you're, you're in the fairway, but you have to like almost lay up or hit a little stinger or something. Cause you can't actually hit your approach cause you have uh, trees hanging over. So being able to have some experience to be able to plot yourself around and know where you need to be is kind of what needs to get it done. And these are really small greens. So as any course is, second shot matters, uh, but you are going to have to scramble inevitably because holding and hitting these greens is very, very challenging. Um, even though the rough is not a problem, even if you are in the fairway, they're really small. Poetry at this time of year, uh, typically middle of the pack in terms of uh, speed there as well. So uh, you got to be able to score. We've seen some pretty low scoring here at times. So you got to be able to, you know, be able to hang it and, and run away with some birdies. Uh, yeah, weather's going to be a factor at times, even though you have some inland stuff, you're going to have some stuff there. Uh, both, both of these places this week, Corrales too, obviously being a, a resort course, uh, exposed to, uh, the, the winds here. You're going to have to watch that as we, as we kind of get into the week. So Ron's preview will be up on the site shortly. So check that out. Uh, well, let's build a, uh, let's build a model. Let's mess around with some stuff here. A couple ideas that I want to buzz through, uh, and, just see what uh, what spits out at us. See what it likes here this morning for the RBC Heritage. All right. Um, I like some recent form stuff. I want to see who's playing really well now. I think that that matters a lot. Uh, should have the Masters stuff here shortly. Don't think we have Masters data quite yet. Uh, but let's just look short term. Um, look at 2024. Who's playing really good golf? If you're seeing this for the first time, uh, reach out if you have any questions. This is available for you to say PGA Tour stat database that allows you to filter, customize any type of way imaginable. We'll get into some of that this morning. There's a watch tutorial button here. You can watch uh, and listen to me for a couple of minutes, tell you how to use this. This is before we did some expansion, so I'll probably put a new one out here shortly. But again, if you have questions in the rabbit hole, uh, let us know. Very straightforward to use once you get a, a you know, poke around with it a little bit. Uh, but it can be overwhelming because there, there are so many views and filters and conditions and ways to look at the stuff. So let's take a look here. Uh, we'll look at 2024. Uh, strokes in total, who in this field is playing really good golf? Uh, and you can see, we can look by rank, average total, percentage of rounds gains, which I love too, shows you consistency. Looking at average, I think is important too, because again, so showing like one to two is great and all but then you need to really see the gap and you got to see xander too in his own way separating a little bit from the rest of the crew uh bryce garnett uh sponsors exemption here interesting we're going to filter out bryce garnett 
uh, 10 rounds play this year. We'll go 12 rounds. So we don't uh, overweight that sample. Kiz, it was a great run, dude. Uh, I kind of enjoy you in the booth. Uh, I, you're probably spending a good amount of time getting ready for the booth as well, uh, as this would indicate. So, uh, yeah, so no surprise here. We'll model as if Scotty's in the field because Scotty's currently in the field. So I'm going to just go sh strokes gain total. Uh, I'll just go strokes gain total 2024. You don't have to make a note here. This is for your own notes. When you start to add a bunch of strokes gain totals and chop them up in a different a bunch of different ways, it's a good reminder to know what you actually are looking at. So I think adding a note here is, uh, is super helpful. All right. Strokes gain total. Here, 2024, just good recent form. Who's been playing really well? Uh, we'll take a look at that. Uh, we'll reset this. We'll go back and we'll look at a couple of other things here. I want to see who's playing well. Uh, this is a look at some of the conditions here. So you can filter this data, like I said, by any possible way. Scoring conditions, course length. We can look at short courses. Field strength is obviously a uh, very, very strong field with mostly everyone in the tour that's eligible other than, like I said, Scott or uh, Vic and Hideki. Uh, you can break it into anything that you would want here. I think some of this is, you know, useful and fun to play around with, but maybe a little bit uh, noisy. We do have small greens, which I think is maybe something we can look at here this week too. If you want to mess around with any of the uh, agronomy stuff in terms of it being, um, uh, you know, specific putting services, fairway services. You can see you got all that here as well. You want to look at Pete Dye. Let's look at Pete Dye. It's a Pete Dye track. Uh, they all have some similarities in terms of Dye wanting to mess with you visually off the tee, kind of lead you to what looks like the problem area. Because if you can hit towards the trouble, it's definitely set yourself up better for the second shot, which is how you can uh, win. Otherwise, if you avoid the trouble off the tee, he typically makes it really hard for you to. I'll put yourself in position with the second shot. It's just kind of a mind game that a lot of the die tracks uh, can get there too. So we can look at that too. This is an Alustin driver course off the tee. A lot of force layups, dog legs. Uh, that's definitely something to, to take a look at here. Uh, gaining off the tee or gaining approach is very uh, challenging here. Uh, so want to wait and see what Ron has in terms of that being difficult or very difficult. But you can see all the different ways here where this could become uh, – Challenging in terms of how to, to to navigate and break some stuff down. I wouldn't overfit this. Continue to tell people. We show up every week and tell you that. I'll show that to people in Discord often. It will tell me like, hey, look, I, I put, uh, you know, no cut, small fields, short course, uh, par 71. And it's not giving me any data. Well, you're overfitting. It's just too, that's just way too much. Your sample size, even if you get anything, would be very noisy. So don't mess around with that. Just uh, stay Stay tight. Do a couple of these things at one time. I'll do Pete Dye tracks here. I will not do my full model or anything, but let's just take a look at Pete Dye. Pull back out the sample. You can see we have not played. Uh, let's see here. Let me update this. 12 rounds. That's why I'm not going to have anything 12 rounds in the last six months. But let's back out here. We'll go last two years. Get a decent amount of Pete Dye tracks. See who's played well on those. Xander Shoffley, Scotty Scheffler, Nick Dunlap, small sample, six rounds. Uh, Ludwig as well, only eight, but has played well. Brian Harmon, JT Poston, Sunjay M, Jordan Spieth, Fitzpatrick, Canley. So kind of the trio that we were talking about earlier, which is interesting. Uh, all right. I'll do a eight-round minimum. And we get some of the noise of the smaller sample guys out of there. So we'll go strokes gain total. This is Pete Dye. All right. Um, let's look at some. Uh, we'll go off the tee here next. And this is a course, like I said, positional golf. You need to be able to set yourself up. Um, but you know what? I'm going to do off the tee different. I'm going to go back to strokes gains. I'm going to take Pete Dye off. And I want to see. I'm going to look at less than driver. But instead of just looking at less than driver performance off the tee, I want to see who's gaining in ball striking and less than driver. Because I think that's actually telling me the story that I want. Uh, when guys are forced to lay up a little bit, how are they gaining in ball striking, which is a combination of strokes gained off the tee and strokes gained approach. 
I think that that's a better use. So I got two years here. We'll go all rounds. Let's see what we're getting here. Small stuff, obviously, for Zal because he uh, he is uh, you know didn't play for the majority of last year. So yeah, I think this is interesting. We're getting basically a decent sample here, getting a little bit from everybody. Uh, ball striking on less than driver. It's great. Scotty, Shane Lowry, Rory Morikawa, Xander Shoffley again, Corey Connors, Brian Harmon, Patrick Canley, Justin Thomas, uh, Cam Young, which is you know interesting to see here too. So yeah, I'm going to add this. I think ball striking, uh, less than driver, uh, strokes game, ball striking. I think that's a interesting way to look at off the tee this week because I think that's what we have here. And I also, also want to look at distance from the edge of the fairway. One of my favorite stats off the tee, especially when you're looking at accuracy. Here's the thing with accuracy here this week because there's a lot of less than driver, like. Accuracy is actually a little higher here than normal than an average PGA Tour stop because guys are clubbing down. So going with straight accuracy is giving you kind of a little, I think it's noisy data. It doesn't really matter this week. Uh, less than driver matters this week. And then what you're trying to capture by looking at accuracy off the tee is what actually what distance from the edge of the fairway tells you. Because what it is, is not just binary yes, no fairway hit. It's when you miss are you in trouble? This is from the edge of the fairway. How far from the fairway are you when you are off the fairway, right? That tells me like, are you spraying it? Or when you miss, did you just maybe get a little bit of a rollout or did you just miss? Um, we had this a couple weeks ago in Houston. It's a great example in that field in Houston. Scheffler was 54th in driving accuracy. He was first by margin in distance from the edge of the fairway, meaning like, yeah, he'll miss it sometimes, but like when he misses, it's not by a lot. He's he's right there. He's he puts himself in position, which is not surprising. So I think that's a significantly better stat in general. And I think it's a better one this week. It tells us a story that we're actually trying to tell by capturing this data. All right, distance from the edge of the fairway here. Some accurate drivers, some familiar names, Colin Morikawa, Russell Henley, Siwoo Kim, Sun JM, Lucas Glover is your top five, and then your next five are, are games you're probably uh expecting to see here, and I think is a pretty good sample. Now, this is a very large sample of data. Let's shrink this down a little bit. Um, I think sometimes having the longest view in the room for this stuff is really important. Let's just go last 50 rounds played. Some of the same names here, although you see, uh, you know, uh, some other names pop up here. I think this is what we're trying to capture here. So we'll go uh, distance from the edge of the fairway, last 50. That's a great way to capture that. All right. So a lot of ways to capture approach. And if you're ever going to double count or go heavy on some stuff, approach is the way to do it for sure. You capture that a little bit of that with the very first stat of just looking at 2024 strokes gain total. Uh, but approach is the most important way to uh, to look at golf. Uh, I think it's obviously the most sticky stat. Let's do it a few ways. I'm going to chop it up. Uh, let's just look short term strokes gain approach last 16 rounds. Who is playing really well? I want to capture this. This is approach. Last 16, you start to just layer some of this in a little bit. Let's go approach last 36 and see a little bit longer who is uh, dialed in on approach. Approach last 36. And again, you can play around with the weights, right? You can start to double count and see uh, you're not giving too much weight to the single stat. But again, if you are ever going to do it, approach is the way to do it. Again, I already have ball striking, right? Uh, strokes game ball striking on less than driver. Kind of a unique sample set, but still getting approach, right? So um, what else are we going to do approach-wise? Here, we'll look at the the uh, where the shots are coming from here this week. Not a lot of less than, uh, you know, a lot of short wedges in, but pretty large sample uh, of 175 to 200. Like, Massive. Last year, almost 30% of the approach shots came in from that specific 25-yard band of 175 to 200. And, you know, about 10 to 12% above in a given week, above average. So 150 to 175, a little less than tour average, still a good amount of shots, but like 10% more from the 175 to 200 bucket. So you also have a good amount from 200 plus. Those are more times than not, less of a scoring opportunity. 
Uh, we can look at that as well. But I think if you're going to look at a proximity range this week, it is the 175 to 200 yard bucket. And we have that data here. Uh, we can look at approaching the fairway. As I mentioned, fairway rate hit is a little bit higher because guys are clubbing down. You can also look at it from the rough if you find that necessary. Uh, but let's take a look here and see fairway 175 to 200 in this field. Uh, last 36 rounds is what I'm at. I think is interesting. Decent amount of sample. Morikawa, Cam Young, Austin Ekro, Eric Van Royen, who is again continuing to play really well. TD Green, Eric Cole, Tom Hoagie, Sam Burns, Max Homa, hung over this morning. Uh, Matthew Fitzpatrick and uh, Bazaynu, uh, top ten as well. And then you get into some other names you're probably expecting to see, which is interesting to see. So we'll add this. I'm going to just give it a little bit of weight. Uh, but I want to capture it a little bit and just see where it is. 175 to 200. I'm not going to mess around with the rough, but you can if you'd like to. For the sake of speed this morning, already going longer because I have apparently no problem filling 30 minutes just going on and on to myself, which is uh, a little surprising. But hey, here we are. All right. A couple of approach things we did there. We did short, a little bit longer, and then we did the approach range from 175 to 200, which is good. Around the green, as I mentioned, these are really small greens. You're going to have to scramble a little bit here. A couple different ways to get there. Um, and you can see here we have some of this data here where you can look at around the green strokes gains, uh, around the green proximity, which I think is an interesting stat, maybe a little bit less here than normal. Sand saves, scrambling in general, scrambling from the rough, and scrambling from short grass. We have both here. Scrambling from the rough is uh, right around tour average. You can get this information in Ron's preview. Scrambling. From the short grass is more prevalent here than a standard tour event. The only problem is just looking at the short grass doesn't capture any of the rough scrambling, which is again something that happens here as well. So I'm just going to look at scrambling in general. Um, I think again there are lots of different ways to look at it here. Um, scrambling, I like to have a little bit larger of a sample because I think it's a a stat that you would want to, you could be a little bit noisy because of the splits with rough and short grass. So having a larger sample can kind of weed out some of the small sample noise that can come in based off of the specific courses that have been played as of late. So uh, this is why I like to always default to larger samples with things outside of approach. Approach, I want kind of all of it, uh, but in terms of the rest of it, I kind of want a little bit of a larger sample. So I'm going to just look at scrambling in general. Uh, and add this in here. This is scrambling last 50. Oh, this is a uh, this is annoying. It does this is gonna make me do it again. This is a uh, tech problem that we'll have to fix. It's good to find. Scrambling, scrambling, scrambling last 50. All right. Uh these are poetry. If you want to look at poetry greens, you can. Um, I want to look at a couple other things. We did P die. Uh, we did less than driver stuff. Um, you can look at specific Harbor town, uh, but I want to look at some comp courses. Uh, we can actually throw, let's just throw Harbor town in here. New Harbor town. I'm going to look at some other courses that are die tracks, just positional golf courses that I think are similar, uh, to the, like the profile that would have had success here as well. So um, I want to look at, uh, we'll look at sawgrass, maybe a little bit off comparatively, but a die track. So maybe double counting a little bit, but you obviously positional golf at sawgrass matters a ton. Uh, Sedgefield is a track that I want to look at. I want to look at colonial for sure. I want to look at sea islands, the, uh, seaside course. Uh, and I want to look at walleye as well. These are shorter. Uh, positional golf courses and look at comp courses and let's back out. I got last, let's we'll say last three years, we'll go last 50 rounds, which you might get for some, yeah, we're getting 50 rounds for some guys, but let's just go back to strokes gains. I will see Tita green who is gaining on these courses. Uh, total is going to capture more. Uh, obviously is going to give me putting and we're not dealing with the same poetry of greens in all of these places. So I don't really want to capture that data. I really, what I'm trying to capture is the, the strokes gain T to green on these positional golf courses. So T to green is what I'm going to look at. Scotty Scheffler, Corey Connors, Colin Morikawa, Russell Henley, Siwoo Kim, 
uh, Luda, Sanjay, Shane Lowry, Xander Shoffley, and Lucas Glover in your top 10. So that's actually what I'm looking at. Comp courses. I want to add that. Uh, Harbor Town's in there as well. So I'm getting specific courses. So let's see what we get here. Let's take a look. Again, I would build my own mall. I'm going to probably build a few more things out, but I want to show you how to use this. I think this is going to give us a good baseline as you kind of attack research here on a Monday morning. Again, get over to Best Sports Golf, read Ron's preview, and kind of add to that pile here. You can see we have uh, added a, a math tool for you. We don't have to do the math, which is absolutely lovely. We also did this. Uh, if you have not seen, if this is your thing, uh, dark mode. Knock yourself out. Dark mode is uh, is here for you too, if that's your thing. Uh, I will show you this too. I didn't show you. You can look at uh, down here. You can download any of these into a CSV. If you like to make your own models, build it over in Excel and slice and dice and do a bunch of things, download any of these to a CSV and it goes over there. Uh, you can look at any of our staff's rankings. Um, I did a top of the head thing last night for Harbor Town. Andy Lack from uh, you know Inside Golf Podcast. You want to look at Lack's model? You could find that Matt Vicenzi from Tap It In Podcast. Ron Kloss, PJ Splits One Hundred One. Andy Molitor does the betting show with me on Tuesday. Mine. You can see the models that we built as well for the week. Go in and find out. Hey, what are they adding and looking at that I'm not? Kind of hone in and see if there's something that maybe you missed. Uh, see if there's something that you don't want. I think that that's probably noise. You don't want in your model. I think it's super useful. And helpful as well. All right, so I'm going to back out of the uh, dark mode, like the light mode, for while we're recording. You can see you can save as many of these as as you like. Um, you know, we're working on some of the math in the background to make sure that you can run those for regardless of the field. Uh, right now, they're set to run based on the field that they were run at the time, but we're we're working on it. We're going to get you player pages and tournament pages first, but we're coming. It's coming. So uh, this is first look, Harbor Town. I'm not going to have a lot of time to do Corrales stuff, but I'll, uh, we'll take a look here. All right. Um, how, what do I want to mess around with here? I can leave it as is, uh, though I would probably mess around. Let's just look short term. We'll go last, just 2024. We'll give it a little bit of a die. I'm going to give it five because we mess around with corollary courses as well. Uh, less than driver, strokes game, ball striking. I think that that is really important. Um, we'll give that a 15 or this is from the edge of the fairway matters a lot. Short-term irons. Great. A little bit longer term irons, more important. And I'll give the fairway bucket. Uh, so again, you can see 35 there alone and I have ball striking and I have this, like we are probably overweighing approach, but again, if you're going to do it, it's the one to do, uh, scrambling matters 10 and I'll go 10 for comp courses just to give it a uh, look. You can see if I do 15 here, I get a little red note. tells me, nope, oh, your ass bad. All right, let's wait and see. Hit the button, generate the report, see who's on top. Scotty Scheffler, guys, is probably going to be on top. All right. Scotty Scheffler leading the cause. Let's see this here. First, second, first, fifth, first, first. Seventeenth in the fairway bucket that we need. Uh, scrambling eighth. Uh, <laughs> he's first by margin. Ludwig second. Siwoo Kim third. Xander Shoffley fourth. Corey Connors fifth. Shane Lowry sixth. Cam Young seventh. Austin Ekro eight. Colin Morikawa nine. Brian Harmon ten. That is your top ten. First look model here this morning on Betsports Golf for Harbor Town. Very very interesting. Um, I did fire at a, uh, player here in the top three. It was longer odds, uh, this morning. I was hoping to get a little bit longer number, but I'm, I'll take it. Uh, just I'm not surprised that he's modeling very well here. Uh, he's been playing really good golf. So uh, yeah, take a look and uh, check this out. Again, I also like to see like from a matchup standpoint, from a DFS standpoint, you'll see the salaries will load here. Uh, DraftKings default, but you can look at FanDuel as well. Um, look at the upside down of this model too. There are times maybe where you don't get the sample for everybody, but like who doesn't pop based off of what you're modeling? Maybe you can use that cross guys off in your DFS pool or look for other ways to uh, to model as well uh, or to, you know, matchups or stuff like that. So that's a uh, a great way to take a look at some stuff. All right, let's, uh, 
uh, let's look at the field. The field is also loaded for the Falls to Harbor Town Heritage Fields. You can also look at Corrales if you want to model. This is a uh, this used to be a extra opposite field event backed up to match play, but now match play is off the schedule, and uh, we still come here uh, swing season events. And you can see a decent decent fields, but uh, you know nothing nothing great. But again, you know some guys. That, we, we bet on all the time here. So um, unique track. Uh, Ronald, I think, have something here too, but long track, par 72, 7,600 plus, uh, one of the longest on tour every year. Uh, scoring is where you got to be here. You got you to be able to, to make your hay and go low. Uh, this is a spot where winds could be a problem because we are, for the most part, exposed to some coastal winds. These are some long par fives. Uh, two on the back are 620 plus. All four par threes are 200 yards plus. Uh, some smaller par fours mixed in, but like you got to be long here for the most part. Uh, we have a fun, I love a good three hole stretch with a name. Uh, the final hole, three hole stretch here is the Devil's Elbow, which is a fantastic uh, name. We have a uh, 18th hole, you got to carry the water for a, uh, a nice finish. So a lot of interesting uh, you know, drama can be had here down the stretch. Pass Palum, fairways, rough, greens, so unique, very sticky, spongy grass, grabby. Uh, I typically see on these coastal warmer courses. Rough is not penal, uh, and Pass Palum is slow. So when you start to model some stuff out, You know those are unique things to look at. Approach matters a ton, obviously. Birdie or better, I want to look at some scoring stuff here because that matters a ton. you got to be able to take advantage of those par fives. Obviously, uh, driving distance, take a look. You can obviously model that out. I have not looked at the – well, let's look at the odds board here real quick for Corrales. Again, thanks to our friends at the Lions who have all this up a little bit early. Alex Noren is your favorite. Uh, Hoygaard, I believe, was second here last year. Showed up real well uh, for the most part at Augusta. See if there's any uh, hangover here. Billy Horschel, Aaron Rye, Nasty Nate Lashley, uh, Doug Gim, Mark Hubbard, Vic Perez, Kevin Yu, Bud Cauley, Berger, not playing well, but man, should just dust this field at his baseline, but that's not where we're at right now. Sorry. Um, Damon's won here in the past. Irons have been playing, are, are good. Be interesting to see uh, Damon get a win. I finally watched the, uh, you know, the Damon full swing episode. It's hard not to cheer for, for Joel Damon uh, right now. Hopefully he can uh, have a nice little week here in, uh, in Putacan and get himself dialed in. So yeah, you can take a look, look at that. I don't have time to model one out for you this morning, but it's available for you if you want to model the uh, Corrales as well. So check that out. It's all here for you. Uh, I'll look at a little bit more, do a little bit more research and probably have something out. If you want to look at my model on Tuesday afternoon, that'll be there for you. So appreciate you guys hanging out with me this morning. Again, want to remind you, pricing is going up today. Take advantage. You will lock in your price weekly, monthly, yearly, whatever you lock in at by today, you will have for the rest of time. If you don't fall off of auto renewal, you lock in, that's yours. If you fall off, you got to come back into the new prices. I'm sorry. Like it's just it's how business works. We don't have a mechanism to, to do anything differently. So take advantage of this. It is massively uh, underpriced right now. I think we're just bringing it up to a price that's, you know, we're closer to where it should be. Um, yearly still just, yearly just going to 249. So right now it's 199. Uh, so you can lock that in for, you literally get every event. You can see here we have, and you know, you got all the content, Discord, our picks, all that stuff. Um, take advantage, betsversgolf.com. If you have questions in the rabbit hole, uh, or you have questions of what, is involved in the subscription or all those things, hit me up uh, on Twitter at Ryan Noonan at Betsports Golf on Twitter as well. Uh, we definitely want to uh, help you out and make this a little bit easier for you. So thanks for hanging out. Subscribe to the channel. This is a new YouTube channel. We've uh, brought this over from our Betsports Media channel. So this is a golf only. So if you want our betting show on Tuesday, DFS on Wednesday, and this first look every Monday morning at 9 Eastern, subscribe. Uh, we'll get that out to you. And we uh, appreciate it very much. So thanks for hanging. It's when